This session on college reading strategies focuses on assignments for a particular class session or several class sessions that gathers materials from a number of different sources. So you're not just reading from your textbook or reading one or more chapters from the same book. Instead, you're reading maybe some journal articles, essays, maybe a chapter from your textbook, but um, things are gathered from a variety of sources. Um, being strategic about how you read with these kinds of assignments can be important, especially in classes where there are a lot of different readings from different sources assigned for one or more sessions. Before we talk specifically about reading, it's important to think about um, with any college work, whether it's reading, test prep, writing, to think about what your motivations and distractions are. Some of us are intrinsically motivated. Um, it means that we are motivated to get our work done simply because we love learning. Others of us need additional motivators. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just kind of the way we, we are and the way we function. The important thing is that you understand how you function. And even those of us who are intrinsically motivated to study because we love to learn may still find times when we just aren't so motivated because we're tired, because we don't particularly like a certain course or a certain professor, or we're not getting the grades we usually do when we realize that actually grades motivate us more than we realized. In those kinds of situations where you need something extra to keep you going, one thing you can do is to set smaller goals for yourself. This is especially important if you have a lot of work to get done. It's much easier to think about getting an hour's worth of reading done or getting one 10 or 12 page article read than to say, oh my word, I have 50 pages I need to read for my next class. Or maybe more than that, depending on how, how rigorous your course is. So set those smaller goals, and then if you need the incentives, give yourself a reward when you have completed those goals. It can be something simple like knowing that when you're done, you can have a snack, or maybe if you like to work out, you can go work out afterwards. If you live at home with your family and you know that you're going to enjoy some time with them when you're done, having those smaller goals with an incentive at the end of it can keep you motivated. The other thing to think about is what distracts you. Uh, some of us are distracted by the noises around us and the commotion around us. If that's the case, we should do as much as possible to drown that out. Wear noise canceling headphones, listen to music or white noise. If you need to find a way to block out what you see around you, that can be helpful as well. All of us, I think, nowadays are somewhat if not very distracted by our phones. So that is something to really keep in mind. Um, if possible, don't work from your phone, but find another device to work from or just work completely from pa paper and printed materials. If you have to have your phone, possibly put it in airplane mode. It's hard to avoid text messages. So I really do recommend that if you're the kind of person who gets distracted by these things, just find some other way to work. Put the phone away, silence it, get it out of sight so that it is hopefully more out of mind. Through this session, as with the other sessions, on college reading, there are three steps that I recommend that you work through and develop a habit for effective college reading. The first is previewing, which means getting an idea of what the reading is about, why you're reading it, what's the general context. Then viewing, that means actually reading. So you don't just sit down and start reading immediately, especially if it's the beginning of a course or if it's a new source that you haven't read before. And then reviewing, that means going back, making sure everything makes sense, that any notes that you have are clear and well organized. For this session, you're going to need three things. One is a print or digital article, essay, or chapter 
from a book. Probably less likely would be a textbook. And so I've given you some options of things to, to look at. If you want to try to find something, you can follow the instructions on the right part of this slide. You're also welcome to use something from a course you're working on or one that you're going to have soon or possibly something you've finished already and would like to just go back over and maybe get in the habit of going through the, these steps and strategies. If you want to follow this tutorial closely, then you can choose the article Race Discrimination and Economic Perspective from the Journal of Economic Perspectives. And you can follow these instructions on the right for getting to that. You also need note-taking supplies. However you take notes in general for college is fine. I will say though that I think at some point in the note-taking process, it's important to write your notes by hand on paper. I personally think that most of the time it's better to do that to start. What, ha what that means is when you are physically writing things down, it actually helps the brain to process. That physical motion of writing helps you to process in a way that typing on a computer does not, or even dictating into a computer app. Um, that can be helpful for certain things, but at some point in your process, do use paper and writing utensils. So you might just have that for now, and then later you could transfer notes to a Word or Google Doc or other, other format that you like to have digitally, and doing that can help you to go, to go through the process of review. The last thing that you need is any relevant course materials. If this is for a course, that means the syllabus and anything else that will help you to know where this reading is situated within the context of the course, perhaps access to Blackboard or other course website, anything at all that will help you to understand in what context you are reading these materials. Make sure that you have these things. Pause this tutorial if you need to, and when everything is gathered, you can start the video again. The first step, previewing, means knowing the overall context, both of the course and of the particular source, so the journal or the book that your reading came from. Sometimes this is really easy to get, We've got some tips here to help you think about how to get this information. And I definitely want you to get this information for the reading that you've chosen. Two things you need to think about with regard to the course. One is what kinds of readings are generally assigned for this course? Does your professor usually assign textbook chapters? Do they assign a lot of fiction? Do they assign a lot of biographies and memoirs about people? Are they assigning a lot of psychology readings? What, what exactly is your course asking you to read in general? And then that can help you to think about whether the reading that you have now is either pretty standard for the course or whether it's maybe quite different, in which case you want to think about well, why would the professor assign something so different right now. If I'm usually reading my psychology textbook, why am I suddenly reading a memoir by a person who's not even a psychologist? The other thing you want to think about it with regard to the course is what topics or questions are being covered in the course sessions. You should at least be able to see what the overarching organization of the course is. Maybe the professor even gives you some specific topics for, for certain days. But think about what you've already done and what is coming up in the course and what you're doing right now. If you don't have a very solid answer because the professor does more listing of readings than actually telling you topics from day to day, at least knowing what's already been covered and looking at what titles of the readings are up and coming can help you to get a sense of topics that are being covered. So you'll want to pause this tutorial and take a look at those materials and see how much you can answer of those two questions. And then you can resume the video. 
now that you have a sense of the course in general, you want to look at the readings and some of these questions will overlap. But one thing you want to know is what what is the source itself? So if you are looking at a journal article, not just is it a journal article, but what what specific journal is it coming from? What kinds of topics or questions does that source address? We will talk a little bit about how you can get that information. But what's the whole purpose of that particular book? With textbooks, the purpose is usually fairly clear. It's to give somebody an introduction to the study of a particular topic like psychology or world history. But with other things like journals, each journal has its own purpose and each book has its own purpose. So what is the purpose of the source? What does it address in general? And then what kind of reading is it? Again, is this scientific reading? Is it history? Is it psychology? And does that fit with what you normally are assigned in this course? Or maybe you usually read your psychology textbook and now suddenly you're reading this memoir. So you can start asking questions about why would I be reading this memoir for this course? If you want to get this information, it can be helpful to know where the information comes from. If you are using uh, some kind of digital source like open access, you should be able to get some basic information about a journal from there. You can also Google to get information about these sources and you might need to do that especially for books. Open access, for example, doesn't necessarily give you basic information about the books. You have to just start reading them. But there are other places you can get this information, both for journals and for books. There should be uh, a site for the journal itself. If you Google the journal, they should have a home page that at least tells you what the purpose of that journal is. Books won't have their own homepage, publishers do, right? But you can find information about those books by Googling. You can find, um, you can find basic information like table of contents from a place like Amazon or Google Books. You can also probably find a basic summary on a site like Amazon. And you might even be able to find some reviews somewhere that can help you. Do be careful. You don't want to get information coming from someone's personal website unless you know they are someone who is reputable, maybe a scholar in the field, someone you have read for the course, but the publisher will have reputable reviews, newspapers like the New York Times, the Philadelphia Inquirer, these kinds of papers will have reputable reviews. What it means is that they have gone through a process where someone has looked at it and made sure they're not just making up information. They are trying to give a sensible review, even if it is opinionated. So don't hesitate to Google to get basic information about what, what the chapters are of a book or what the different articles are that are covered in a journal and maybe what the purpose of that journal is and what the purpose of the book is. And I can show you here for example here is the Journal of Economic Perspectives which is our test journal and the article itself is here in the 2020 issues. But if you see here from open access, each journal has a journal homepage, which if you click on it, gives you some basic information about the journal. It fills in the gaps between general interest press and academic economic journals. And you can even click and get some more information here. Not a lot, but some more information can be helpful.
Another thing that can be useful then, I also mentioned Amazon. So let me bring up the Amazon page and I can show you as well. Here we have Amazon. Imagine, for example, that you had to read not only the journal article that we we're looking at, but also a chapter from this book, The Economics of Race in the United States. I'm sure you're familiar with Amazon that you can click on look inside and get the table of contents. This is helpful because look at all of the topics we can see here. This helps us to understand what's important for the authors of this book with regard to the, the topic of economics and race. The other thing that we can see here is that Amazon usually has a basic summary. You probably want to be careful scrolling down and finding information from individual Amazon users, but any reviews that they publish from the publisher uh, are usually, they, those have gone through some publication review, so those are reputable as well, though something like this or a summary in Google Books would probably be more helpful. So don't hesitate to use those kinds of sources as well. They are reputable enough for just getting a basic sense of what a book is about. Let me bring back the PowerPoint slide now. And what I would like you to do, you should know about the course. Now what I want you to do is pause the video again and make sure that you can answer these questions about the reading, whether it's about this article from the Journal of Economic Perspectives or another reading you're looking at. If you can answer these three bullet point questions, then you are ready to keep going with this video. So from the Journal of Economic Perspectives, here's what we can notice by looking around to find out about this journal. We find out that it's published by the American Economic Association, which includes scholars, government, and private business members. And we find out that its goal is to bridge that divide between academic study of economics and general audience interest. The important thing then is to draw some conclusions, right, and help to uh, help yourself to understand what kind of information you're going to get and how you can use this reading. From seeing this information, my conclusion is that I should expect a variety of perspectives engaging academic study of economics and its relevance for general audiences. It doesn't necessarily help me with specific details of this article, but at least I'm not going to be taken totally off guard because often when you are prepared for something, your brain is ready to start taking it in. Um, that's important for setting up a framework because when you set up a framework, you're giving your, your brain something to start working with. The details of the reading will have something to attach to instead of just reading from scratch and not knowing what to connect anything to. Doing these things can help you to get reading before you actually read. Now that you know the context of the reading, I want you to think about what kind of information you think you will get from the reading and what do you already know about the topic. You should be able to formulate something about that reading now that you have some idea of where it's situated in the course and where it is situated within its own source. You also should know something about the topic in general. If everything is completely foreign to you, 
You might even just Google some of the words and look them up to find out what they mean on a basic level. But in the case of economic perspectives on race, we probably have some knowledge or information about economics and about race. So we could start to just detail maybe two or three things we know about that already. Even if it's just some very broad information like white people tend to earn more in general than people of color. You don't even have to have the statistics, but maybe you've heard that before. So pause this video and just jot down some answers to those two questions, then you can resume. Okay, so we have a general framework and now we want to look specifically at the chapter or the article or the essay and get a more specific framework for the reading. To do that, I want you to go through these four steps and you're going to pause the video again. I want you to look at the table of contents and see what other topics are covered, just like we saw with that Amazon book. I want you to look at the introduction, those first few pages, the first few paragraphs, whatever it is, and get an idea of the purpose of the book and or find a review or other summary from a trustworthy source that tells you the purpose and general content. Actually, this is just if it's from a book and that introduction is probably an introductory chapter or a preface or something like that. For a journal, you're not going to get an introductory chapter, but you will get a table of contents for that issue. Both the book and the journal should tell you what other topics are covered in that source and you might even get some subject headings that break things down into larger units. See where your reading fits. Then what I want you to do is look through your actual reading, that chapter or that article. See if there are any subject headings that break that particular section down into parts and just make note of what those are. It gives you a kind of outline for the reading. If you don't have that, then you won't be able to get that information, but always look, it's worth checking. Now you can read the actual introductory paragraphs to your chapter or your article or essay. The first few paragraphs, maybe page or so, find out what the argument, question, or guiding purpose is for that particular chapter, article, or essay. If you can't get it from the introduction, Maybe try looking at the conclusion. The last several paragraphs should review what was covered. So again, pause this video and go through those four steps to get a sense of how this reading in general is organized. So from this article, Race Discrimination and Economic Perspective, there are some things we can note just from looking through it and getting a sense of its organization. And from looking at the introduction, we learn it talks about the labor market and the criminal justice systems. And from the conclusion, we learn that its focus is really on how economists view discrimination in these two spheres, which tells me that when I'm done reading this article and taking notes, I should be able to say, what they have to say about the labor market and the criminal justice systems. And I should understand that these are really how economists are viewing discrimination in these two sectors. And then the rest of these bullet points break down the different headlines for the article which again cover what's already been covered a bit, the labor market and the criminal justice system, but breaking it down into smaller components, different types of work discrimination, specific sec sections of the criminal justice system, police and courts, and then some other relevant topics related to race and discrimination that economists have thought about. 
This is helpful because now once I'm done reading this article, I can go back and say to myself, okay, can I explain the different types of work discrimination and how they're related to race? Can I explain how the police and the courts are related to race discrimination and economics, right? This is still an economics article and so on and keep looking at each of the major sections to make sure that I have comprehension. If you don't have these subject headings to help you break down the article, you're going to need to try to do this yourself. And the main thing that I recommend in that case is that you look at the first lines, the first sentences of paragraphs and get a sense of, as you're reading, where do new major ideas begin? It can be helpful to either mark that if you are writing in or on your reading, or if you are not marking it up, then make notes in your notebook new major point begins on page 73. Third major point begins on page 89. A good writer will give you some clues that you are moving on to the next major piece of their argument. And reading the introduction and the conclusion can help you also to have that framework. So as you read, you can say, oh, okay, they said they were going to look at the labor market and the criminal justice system. Now they're moving on to the criminal justice system and make a note of where that begins in the reading. So once you have all of the answers to these questions, you should have a solid understanding. It seems like a lot, and if you've never gone through this process before, it may seem like it's taking a lot of time, but you will get efficient at it the more you practice it. I really do recommend that you practice it through this tutorial and maybe practice it again with some other readings if you're not in a course right now and are trying to prepare or start using it right away with the course readings that you do have. The more you do it, the easier it will become. It will become like secondhand practice for you soon enough. Now, I do recommend that you pause the video and actually read through your reading and go through the steps of preview, view, and review. We are in the view part of the process right now, which means you are ready to read from beginning to end. Before you start, what I want you to, to think about is as you are reading, when you come to the end of each section or subsection, or if you are noticing that it's transitioning to a next major point, if it's not breaking things down into different sections with headings, stop and make sure you know what each section or major point was about. Make sure that you have some notes. They don't have to be the complete comprehensive notes at this point, but make sure you have some notes. And if you are highlighting or underlining, make sure you are doing so sparingly. You don't want to highlight major sections of text. You want to highlight or underline words and phrases that will draw your eyes back to the words so that you can say, okay, they were talking a lot about that. I need to make sure my notes are clear on that. This can be a time to underline vocabulary words that are covered that you know you need to make sure you have definitions of, or to, if you know that you need to know names and dates for your, for your course, to underline or highlight those names and dates, but don't underline and highlight all of the information about it. Just underline the name or date, and later you can go back and make sure, okay, did I get the notes I needed on why that name or date matters? Even if all you do right now is pause the video and work through the introduction and maybe the first major section of the reading you're looking at, I do recommend you at least start to get into this practice so that you read through it, pause at the end of the section and say, do I know what it's about and what would I take notes on? So do that now and you can resume the video. I asked you to take notes and part of the process of note taking happens while you are reading.
but part of it can also happen and should happen when you are done reading. To take effective notes, you need to go through the things that we've been talking about here, knowing the course context so that the notes you take connect the reading to the course, knowing the goals, arguments, and organization of the readings themselves so that you can take notes that address those goals and arguments and make sure that you have an understanding and some notes about each of the major sections or points. And if you know the purpose of the readings for your course, whether that's for discussions, tests, or writing, then you can take notes accordingly. And we will talk a bit more about that next. That's the purpose of the whole process we've been through so far is so that while you are reading, you can read effectively. And at the end, you can be confident that you have what you need. As far as what you are preparing for, it can vary from course to course and professor to professor. And as far as knowing when you start a new course, what those expectations are, don't hesitate to talk to professors, ask them, send them emails. If you know other people who have taken the course, you can ask them as well. But figure out what kind of tests you might be taking if they are multiple choice and short answer do you need to know names dates data vocabulary so that you should be underlining and taking notes on these kinds of things if you know you will have essays for your test you'll want to think about the major ideas concepts and arguments that are presented in the reading and have some examples related to them so that you can explain what those are as far as the ideas and arguments and explain how the reading is addressing it. For discussions, it's great to have some questions to ask. Questions that um, come out of the reading naturally are always the best if you want to know more about something and the reading just didn't get there. Ask that question. If you aren't sure why an author argued what they did or why an example is suitable for what they're trying to explain, don't hesitate to ask about it. You also want to think about analyzing or responding to the reading in some way if it's a discussion to say that you didn't think that the data was sufficient or to say that the author had some good examples, but their connections weren't exactly clear. You had to read between the lines. Whatever you're thinking about as you try to assess. For writing assignments, it can be different depending on the kind of assignment. If it's a response kind of paper where you just have to write some kind of short response, it can be similar to what you think about for a discussion. But if you have to write something with your own argument, then you probably want to take those ideas and examples and work your own argument and connect those ideas and examples from the reading as they help you to support your own argument. We've been through the processes of the steps of preview and view, and the last step of the process is review. One thing that's important that you don't necessarily have to do for a course where all you're doing is reading a textbook or where you're assigned one book after another in sequence, for this kind of situation where you're presumably reading at least two, maybe more sources for a single session or set of sessions, you want to be able to compare and contrast your readings when you're done to step back, see the framework again, put some more pieces together in that framework, ask, do these readings cover the same topics? And if so, how do they provide different kinds of information that might help each other? Your professor is not going to ask you to read five dictionary articles on a course concept unless those dictionary articles all offer something different for you to think about. The professor will offer you readings that provide supplemental information and ideas to one another. So if they cover the same topics, then what information is each one giving you? Are you clear about that? If not, you might look back and make sure that you do have something from this reading that isn't covered in that reading. 
Another thing to think about is what information, questions, and ideas are different. Sometimes you're getting the same topic covered from different perspectives. One perspective on economics from a sociological perspective and one from an economist perspective, and maybe one from history or some other aspect of the humanities. So where are where are the ideas and information different and then do they agree or disagree with each other about anything that's helpful to know as well you can point that out in a discussion you can point that out in your writing or even use it to help you develop your own argument and the last thing about review I do recommend that if you are really doing this for a course that you go through this process of review and compare your several readings. You could even do this for yourself and find another reading from open access if you want to practice and maybe at least look at two different articles and see how they compare and contrast. But no matter what, whatever you're doing your review for, it's always important to look back within 24 hours, especially if there's a test, a discussion, or a writing assignment at some point. If you do it within 24 hours, there's less that you have time to forget. And reviewing then also helps you to move it into short-term memory, long, from short-term to long-term memory. This might be the time to now transfer your notes to either some kind of review sheet, if you like to do that, or to transfer it to a Word or Google Doc if you're trying to collect things that way. Make sure in general your notes are clear and organized and then make sure that you do have a, an understanding of how the readings go together for the course. You may not have a complete understanding, but if you are completely confused, that's the time to talk to the professor or to someone else in the course. I hope this session has been helpful. And I hope to see you for some of our workshops on note taking and time management.